Alrighty, we have reached the last tool in our review of competitive research for SEO. And I've left the best for last because I absolutely positively love KW Finder. Um, about a year ago when Google changed the amount and quality of data that was available in the Google AdWords tool for um, people like me who don't actually pay for ads, um, I was left stranded. I didn't have a good source for getting keyword data and traffic volumes and keyword opportunities. So I spent a week going through a variety of uh, packages available for keyword research. And I actually posted a long blog post about it uh, on our Web Savvy site and um, with my results and links to all of the different solution providers. So it is there should you want to review it. But I'm going to tell you that KW Finder is the best tool for the money that you can buy. Um, and the main reason is because it was one of the only tools that I found that allows you to import a list of keywords as well as export your results. And if you're doing a really large SEO project or even, you know, just you're doing an SEO project for yourself and you've got a large volume of keywords, keywords, you need to be able to import your seed list and you need to be able to export that data. And a lot of the tools just don't let you do it. And, you know, that's problematic. Um, the other thing that I found was um, this just has really good data. It's visually uh, easy to use. And I just quickly uh, changed my, my way of digesting data from the old AdWords data over to this. And I haven't missed a beat and I just truly enjoy it. And it is really economical to subscribe to. You can use it for individual keywords. I think you get three searches a day or you can purchase it for like $12 a month and it is definitely worth the money. Um, you know, and I, I spend money on keyword or excuse me, on SEO tools. And I know that the average small business owner or consultant only has so much money to spend. I absolutely think this one is worth your money. Um, you know, and I've, I've, I've ignored all the other tools that I think are pricey or just don't provide value for the money that you spend. This one does. Um, so let's walk through it. So, um, you know, as we've been going through our uh, competitive research for WordPress hosting and using SiteGround as our example company and competitors like GoDaddy and HostGator and WP Engine, and one of the phrases that had continued to pops up is web, host, web hosting or website hosting and then managed WordPress hosting. Managed WordPress hosting has become the darling keyword for this industry because so many people now really want the managed WordPress hosting. And I'm on it with Liquid Web. I love Liquid Web. Um, and we have accounts and websites hosted at WP Engine as well. Uh, and it's because it's just it's a good offering for uh, WordPress users. So we're going to use this just as, as an example to go through because um, I think it provides a great data point and it really relates to the competitors that we've been looking at. So um, in KW Finder, I input manage WordPress hosting and you can see the results that have come up. Um, on the left hand side is the, this, the word that I put in um, and I can actually come in and I can start to filter this results if I want. Um, I can put minimum and maximum searches for the data that I want. Um, difficulty ranking. I can um, put words I want to include and those to exclude. Um, and why would I want to do this? Okay, so let's say, for example, that I don't want to look for keyword phrases that have cheap in it or free. So I'm going to exclude cheap and I'm going to exclude free. And now I can set these and have this repopulate my results and I will get fresh results from the tool and it should take out anything that's got free or cheap. Um, and when you're doing a large keyword process, keyword research project, this is really required. Um, so now maybe, um, you know, I, I want to look through these and I'm looking at this data and I don't really know what it means. So on the left hand side, it gives you the phrases that it's suggesting. It gives you my phrase and bold showing you search trends. And if there's any dips, you know, or peaks shows you the, um, the search volume per month and, and its exact match. And you can, um, on any of these tools, like I said, you can hover with a little question mark and I'll show you what the uh, what it actually is. Um, cost per click, I really don't care much about this except for the fact that if I see some low volume searches with some high value money associated with it for pay-per-click, I'm like, okay, well maybe that's got a good click-through rate and it's got a good spend rate for actually translating into revenue for these, these uh, advertisers. So I give it a little bit more attention. 
Um, so the next we have pay-per-click difficulty. Again, really don't care because my world is not pay-per-click. My world is organic SEO. Now we come over to keyword difficulty, which takes into a number of factors, which is these guys on the right hand side. It's going to look at domain authority and page authority and Moz ratings and um, and things like that. So so this is um, will show you how what are your chances are of potentially ranking on it. And it's not your chances for the, your specific URL, just in general. So green means it's easier. Um, to beat to win or to beat a specific competitor um, yellow um, less easy orange getting difficult and um, red really difficult and you'll see over here that it's saying that uh, host gator would be hard to beat because it's got a 75 associated with it the higher the number um, the harder it is to to beat um, so again, so just, just let's look at the guys in the left first. We're not going to look at the data on the right yet. Um, I have all of these available. I can come up here and I can change this search and I can look for, um, auto completes from Google that would relate to this phrase. So when you start to type something into Google, what does Google come back with? And it's just another way to view the data. I like to look at these. I usually, um, up until the, having this tool, I would manually go in and start typing those in to see. Well, now I'm starting to see these from a report, which is much nicer because it saves me a lot of time. I don't have to try to document it. Um, and then the final one is questions. And questions, because of um, the, the, because of the difference in, in searches that are coming with people and the different types of searches, um, you're really starting to see um, a different type of presentation that, that, that like the, the questions that people search on is completely different now than what it was before. We're seeing much more longer tail searches. And we're seeing people like my son and my daughter come online and my son and my daughter, um, they search for things with longer phrases like questions, you know, or, or even um, voice search, for example, like when, where you're using um, Surrey or you're using um, Google Home, you're just going to see a completely different type of, of question. You know, what is managed WordPress? What is WordPress? My son asked the other day, is mac and cheese healthy? You know, it just, the search is changing and that's what this question tab is trying to give you. So let's go back to the questions and we'll search on this for a second. Okay, so this has popped up and I can see my, my, my search phrases again. Now, what if I wanted to bring in a bunch of searches? What would I do? I would come in here and I would say import searches. And it's going to take me a minute, but let me just type in a bunch of keywords. Maybe I want to throw in some vendors too. And so now I can import these in. I have up to 700 that I can bring in. You can also drag and drop and you can use an Excel spreadsheet to bring these in. Very powerful, it saves you a lot of time. Okay, so now it's showing me my searches for just the ones that I've selected and I've typed in. And the nice thing is, is I can select the ones that I want. I could say I want to add these to a list. And I can start creating a list and collect this list in side KW Finder, which is typically something I used to do in Excel offline, but I could do it right in here. And so, you know, I'm looking at this and maybe I'm, I'm seeing it and I'm like, you know what, look at this web hosting. Well, crap, now I can see why Site, SiteGround is so thrilled about this and wants to see this. So maybe I want to see just this now. Now I'm completely shifting my results. And instead of seeing just WordPress things, I'm starting to see VPS hosting, email hosting, reseller hosting, web hosting. Okay, maybe that wasn't the best option, so we're going to go back and we're going to get ourselves back to WordPress hosting, and actually manage WordPress hosting. Sorry about that. I think faster than I can actually type a lot of times. Okay, so I'm back to my manage WordPress hosting. I just really want to focus on that. I want to get rid of the clutter. So I see it's got 2,400 searches per month. Overall difficulty value of 48. Now I want to start looking at 
who is ranking on page one? WP Beginner is ranking on page one. They have a domain authority of 76, which is very good. Not quite as good as GoDaddy's of 96. The page authority for this is 68, which is why they're at the top versus these other guys. Um, but, well, wait, wait a minute. The HostGator's got a 74, and the PC Magazine's got a 71. Why would they not be ranking above them? Well, now we start to look at some other factors, like the Moz rank and the Moz Trust. <coughs> so they start to come into play, as well as the links. What are the number of external links being passed over to this specific URL? And you see that WPeginner has got 211. Inbound links still matter in SEO, and we can see that here. Um, WPCubes got 43, much higher than HostGator or PC Magazine, which is probably why they're ranking above. But wait a minute, what about Media Temple? Media Temple's got 85 links. However, you got to take all the data points into account. Do they have a higher domain or page authority? And what about their, their Moz rank? What about social sharing? This column right here is Facebook shares and Google Plus. And you see that Media Temple hasn't been very active on Google Plus. So if I was Media Temple and I wanted to increase my rank for this specific um, phrase, I would try to build Google Plus ranks into this specific URL. Same thing for this guy right here. Um, I have no idea why WP Engine is showing as a one. This is it's just goofy data. So, and you do see this once in a while in reports. So you just kind of have to discount that and say, okay, I'm not going to really pay much attention to that. Let's, you know, kind of let's get rid of that. Um, but we do see some really good information. If I wanted to, I can just I can like click on this and it takes me right over to the page. So now I can start to see um, exactly what this page is about and you know can I can I produce better content than what this is offering. Okay, going back to um, uh, our, our um, list, I can say open in the SERPs checker, and it will give me even more information. Now I can see, like, beautiful data. I love this because it's all graphical, and I start to see color coding things, and it's just it's really nice and powerful information that provides me great metrics, and I can export this into a nice spreadsheet that... Um, provides me detailed information for this specific keyword. But what if I wanted to take this down to just web hosting? I can do that too. So now this starts to give me different information. Notice how we shifted to a whole bunch of reds, and that's because this is a more competitive phrase. And it's going to um, be more difficult to rank. And see the little 77 up there? That definitely shifted, and, and it does mean that this would be harder to rank on. Here's a snapshot of what's showing on page want to Google. This tool right now gave you so much information, it's not even funny. You started from looking for keywords with the main tool and importing potential keywords. It gave us a full list of potential keywords and let's refresh that so you can see that. Let's look at web hosting. Gave us a nice big fat list of keywords and we can go and look at all these different options. We could come and we could filter these results and say, no, I only want to see stuff that has a minimum of 500 searches per month and a maximum of 50,000 searches per month. And I can set that filter. I can change it to say, you know what? Nope. I actually get rid of that. Let's not do that. I want to look at number of words. It's got to have at least two words and no more than five words. And I can set that filter. And now I can start looking at that data. It's just super um, um, informative when you're looking at keyword research, either for you or a specific domain, uh, which is why I really do find this, this tool valuable. Um, and then, you, again, you get to export this data. I can select all, and I can say I want to export it. And I can export it to a nice Excel spreadsheet that I can you know, clean up and, and use for further research. So. Um, you know, for the money, I absolutely believe this is a wonderful tool. I would encourage anyone who's doing keyword research to utilize this, spend the money on it. Um, I don't make any affiliate revenue from KW Finder. It's just I'm giving them love and because I do find it so valuable and I and I do want to promote them because I think that more and more and more people that discover this and realize it's such a good tool will truly um, enjoy utilizing it and finding
um, great information about it. So um, please consider using this in your competitive research. And I hope that this video has been helpful in evaluating it and you know, bringing this data into your overall um, SEO process and evaluating one competitor against another.